so it's a late start to the morning. I uh, just thought I'd pop on and do a quick little video. Um, it's really important anything that you do in farming or in life that you really find out what is your intention, what is your goal, and that will help you align with the way that you make decisions. So I've had some people ask, how do all of our animals live together? And that has actually been a, a challenge and a big learning experience. So it is important for us that all the animals are kind of free and it feels authentic. Um, so what we actually have right behind me, that is the chicken coop. And then on the inside of the barn, we have our goats that stayed together with the lambs and then separated inside the barn are the alpacas. So the alpacas and the goats don't sleep in the same space. And that is simply because their dietary needs are a little bit different. So if, good morning friends. So the alpacas consistently morning and night get extra grain. Um, the goats don't quite as regularly. Um, they do more regularly in the winter and they do definitely um, regularly when they're pregnant. However, um, the goats just start to get a little bit too chaotic and really uh, grain aggressive, so to speak, for lack of better words. Um, so they are kept separated. I'm just gonna show you a couple of things. Even though all the animals don't sleep in the exact same space, they enjoy the outdoor space all together. So what we've had to do is trial and error. We've had to figure out what doesn't work. We had a great idea and it doesn't work. So in the barn, we built this corral space because what we found was it was really hard to get the alpacas in without the goats getting in the way. So then we had to build something that would separate them. So, and then it became part of our routine. So the way that we do things is very systematic because it is it works. So what we have to do when we bring them in at night is the goats have to come in first. We use grain, we get them to come in, and then the alpacas can just glide into their space happily. Because what we found before is we were trying to get goats out of the alpaca pen and then it made it um, difficult. It was stressful. And there's already a lot of work that goes into the property. So what you wanna be able to do is do things with as much ease as possible. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me. Um, one of our biggest challenges is keeping the chickens and the goats together. So what happens is that once we open the door for the chicken coop, the goats run in, they eat the, the food, um, which gets expensive and it's not for goats. So what we actually did here is we would lift this and hang it from the ceiling. And then that way the goats couldn't get it. So we thought some of the goats would still get in, stand up and then they would eat all the food still. So then we started actually taking the food out. Uh, then we built a little chicken coop door. However, a lot of the small goats could still fit in. So now what we do is we feed the chickens an appropriate amount at night. It'll be gone by the morning. If it is not, we remove the food fully. And then if the goats get in here, they are not eating the chicken feed. So in order to keep everybody living happily together, we really had to come up with a system that works based on uh, figuring out what didn't work. So when we first come into the barn, what we do is we top up food and water for the meat birds. Then we do the same for the layers, close the door, we feed the alpacas. Um, then we'll give water to the alpacas and to the goats, as well as the water that is outside. Then we let the alpacas out, close their pen, and then we open up the pen from the goats and then leave that door open all day so then the animals have access in and out. We use a lot of carabiners around here. Um, what we have found, if the carabiner is not here, then the dairy goats will actually open this up 
and let the alpacas out when they may not be supposed to. So I just came in to feed the alpacas and what happened is we have a very happy buck. We have a few pens, um, but he keeps escaping from every single pen. So this seems to be the best one. So it's a catch pen that we have in here where the alpacas are. The only issue he still gets out of this, it's a four foot gate and he still makes his, his way out. Um, but right now, this is the best place for him. That's Earth, my friend. And the problem with having Coco, our buck, in here is the exact reason why we don't keep our goats and alpacas together. Alpacas are far more hygienic so they poop in the same spot. Granted, that spot gets bigger because then they just poop on the edges of it. Um, however, what I noticed when I went in there is Coco had escaped, gotten in the pen, which is really not a huge deal, other than the fact that he got himself into the trough that we put the alpaca feed in. And since he got his way in there, there were pieces of poop. So last thing that you want is any animal to be eating um, from an area that has been pooped on. So I had to make sure I didn't just take it away, that it had a proper clean so there's nothing left, um, no feces left. So then the alpacas can have their meal. Because we keep all of our animals together, um, it is super important that every month we take in a fecal sample to the vet so they can take a look to make sure that there's no parasites, no worms, no coccidia, anything like that. And that if there is, it can get treated super quick. Um, because again, all the animals are together, they're pooping all over the place. Um, they're grazing potentially over top of where there, there could be poop. So it's really good to have a good connection with your vet and especially if you have so many different types of animals that are residing together. That's an unhappy buck in the back. She just wants lady friends, but we need to keep, or he wants lady friends. We need to keep him separated because there's a few girls that he cannot get pregnant.